Hi, I'm Wes Henry. So I'm a digital artist. So in a nutshell, what has happened is I quit my job right before COVID. I was a creative director in Chicago working in advertising. <clears throat> and so I was like, all right, I'm going to do a piece of art basically every single night. So I started, I got uh, an iPad, I got an Apple Pencil, and I downloaded the app called Procreate. Um, which is what I still use, uh, just upgraded to like the iPad Pro, like, you know, like a year ago, but um, that's all you need. The, that app is 10 bucks. You know, you think it's like thousands of dollars, it's $10. And so I started every night doing something and posting it on Instagram to see what people would think. <clears throat> and it got big quickly and Instagram um, started to I don't know. I got like 32,000 to some people. That's like, that's nothing. But to some people, it's like, holy crap. How did you do that? So anyways, I did all of that and got it going. And I was working on all my art. And I was like, all right, this is just going to be my side income. And then NFTs came around. Uh, and actually, like Logan Paul DM'd me on Instagram and was like, hey, I'm going to fight Floyd Mayweather. And I'm a giant boxing fan. And I was like, holy crap. He's like, I want to do the the a fight art i want you to be my guy and i'm like oh my god he's like it's perfect i love your art you're a boxer you do all this like already i'm doing like all these mike tyson pieces and stuff um so i was super pumped and he's like and you've minted one nft like you know what nfts are so anyways i worked with him and i was like i really got to figure out this nft stuff this i think is going to be a big deal and so i started trying to get on platforms, talk to one of my other buddies that um, could help me out. And I just started picking up the phone, you know, can you help me? Can you lend me your thoughts? Uh, how did you do it? How are you doing it right now? How do you structure these things? Because I had a stockpile of art that I was sitting on, right? And I'm, I was still doing a piece of night. Uh, and then I ran into this guy named Sabit, who I was like, oh, this, this guy's killing it. Like he's on every platform. And he's, and he was like, I'm going to take you under my wing and show you how I do this. So he's like, we're going to get you set up on open C. Here's how I recommend, you know, do your drop schedules, your pricing, your quantity, all this stuff. Um, so that was less than a year ago. So that was like June, no, July of last year is when I started on open C and it was just boom, like explosion. I mean, it went from, oh, maybe this will be some side income to sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. Every day for three months, my account did like uh, the amount of, like hundreds of ETH, hundreds of ETH. It was so insane. I think it, I passed like 500 ETH in like three three months, something like that, which is unheard of, just insane. So it was like really great timing too. And I had a lot of support and a lot of, you know, my fan base, everyone was so amazing. And um, so it was life-changing. So then after that, uh, a lot of other artists, um, meaning like musicians, uh, artists, were taking notice. Um, and I was working with other companies, so I do a lot of art that's kind of um, has like kind of a hip hop vibe to it, that type of thing. Um, I'm like a '90s, you know, grew up listening to hip hop, all that stuff. Where like these musicians are like untouchable legends and all, all of the stuff. And then one of those untouchable legends, Busta Rhymes, his people basically were like, hey, we, Busta wants to do an NFT. And he was doing uh, in collaboration with a company called uh, Hustle. And they're pretty amazing. There's the metaverse stuff that they're doing is insane. Um, and they reached out to me and they got a hold of me personally. And one of my other buddies, uh, a big collector of mine, put me in touch with them they're like hey we want you to be the guy like we think your art is great and it would be awesome if you were the guy but like right then Busta had put it out to the world like tweeted like hey somebody make me something dope and I was like oh damn I'm on the clock like if I'm gonna win this it's like a global competition essentially because if I don't put something out that he loves it doesn't matter who I know or you know who knows him or whatever um, so that night I was like in LA traveling cause I somehow just have to go to LA like every three weeks. Uh, and I was just, I was staying on my, one of my friend's couch and I'm just like, I'm going to do it tonight and, um, did a piece that night and it was super dope. I was super proud of it. Showed it to him and his people and they're like, boom, you got it. So that was it. He chose it. We dropped that NFT. We had a, a great partnership. Um, and I went to New York, got to meet him meet his son we hung out like it was it was you know insane to be a part of that world and and meet 
um, you know, Busta and his friends and his family, like his son is cool as hell. Um, and then right after that, like a week, Snoop Dogg was interested, you know, and I'm like, all right, well, I'm still, in, you know, I think I'd already gone home, but I'm like, all right, I'll fly back out to Inglewood, go to Snoop's compound and meet him. So I made his son, who's like a similar age to Busta's son, and we're hanging and he's kind of, cause it's, that's like, uh, the kids are kind of running the NFT business for their, and their father's like legacy is like so giant. So then Snoop, I'm in the studio, like meeting him and like, and we're just talking and everything. And he like is looking through my art on my phone. I'm like, yeah, I do stuff like this, like this, we can do whatever we can, you know, collaborate. And I, I run it on open sea. So that's the beauty is a, a lot of these artists are all about the NFT world because of the principles behind it, which is, there's no middleman. There's no studio. There's no, you don't need anyone. Like I'm a full-time artist right now. I thought it was going to take me five to 10 years to become a full-time artist, but thank you. NFT world. They made it so that I can be a full-time artist starting last year in July. Um, and it's absolutely life-changing. And so that's all that I want is to keep, is to stay there. And if more money comes in, I can work with crazier people. I have budgets for projects. I rolled out a new project with um, a pro poker player, Jonathan Little, and we did this thing called Deck of Degeneracy, where it's like a deck of cards. And um, Cam Kilmer, I know, bought a deck. And it's super fucking awesome, right? Like, we sold out, and now the floor is at like 0.35, which, you know, you got to worry about that stuff. Sometimes I don't care what anyone says. Like you got to worry about it a little bit. Um, so in this crazy NFT world, when you go to these events like NFT LA or NYC NFT NYC, like there's a lot of acronyms. I don't fucking know. Well, you or like Art Basel had a large NFT um, showing this year, right? And that's where I met um, Randy. So. Um, that's how I got involved is essentially um, he was like, Hey, check this out. Here's what we're doing. We should work together. I actually had dinner the first night I landed in Miami. I hit up um, Sabit and was like, what are you doing? You know, let's get dinner or something. He's like, I'm meeting my buddy, Randy. We were going to dinner. You should join us. I'm like, cool. And like, that's how it happened. So we have dinner. Everyone gets to know each other. Hey, this will be fun. Maybe we can work together in the future. All right, cool. See ya but we trade information. And then one day, Hey, I got this idea or I'm doing this one thing, or maybe you'd be interested in this or we interested in that. And, um, and we're friends. Like I see him every time I go back to LA or, you know, wherever we are, we always find a way to, to meet up and talk and do something and talk shop and business is fun. Like talking shop in this world is not, you know, it's fun as hell. So it's like, what can we dream up and do something fun that everyone will enjoy? That's all. That's that's what business is. So, um, so essentially, he told me about Cam Kilmer and what they're doing. I'm like, of course, I would love to be involved, and I'm a giant Val Kilmer fan. And I um, saw the documentary, and I know that um, in Val Kilmer's like, my name is Wesley, and that's like an important. There's like a weird like synergistic thing. Um, even the piece that Val bought of mine before. Um, like there was a weird synergy that was happening in the description. I used like a quote um, from, uh, I use a lot of quotes from like old philosophers like Rumi or a Lao Tzu, things like that. And um, it kind of like hit home. There was a lot of things where we're like, how did that, how did the stars align so perfectly for this one thing? And that happens too. I mean, when you're putting it out there and you're making all these things and knowing all these people, like these stars align a lot more than you would think because of the amount of like effort that's going into it. It's, there's no like luck, right? It's just that preparation eventually, that opportunity is like, bing, and you're like, bing, and then it's all good to go and it happens. And that, I've found that to be like, the, if there's any like words of wisdom I could put out for anyone trying to do anything, it would be like work begets work. So like if the more you're doing, the more you're gonna get to do. So anytime that that wave starts to fall a little bit lower, I'm like, I need to just produce dope art. That's what I do best. I don't need to work on my social media strategy and work on my fucking business, this and watch the numbers and floor. Like, yeah, okay, fine. You can make an argument for all those things. But like at the end of the day, make dope shit that people want. That's um, 
what I try to do. And, um, and now Cam Kilmer being paired up with all these other talented people that are in there. And I'm like, this is why the hell wouldn't I want to do that? Right. It's like, if it benefits everybody and it's about art and having fun and there's no stress. Yeah. I'll do it in a second. This is great. 